evening. It's 6 30. We have a quorum. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Jeff Squire. Uh, uh, Jeff Squire from the Berkshire Design Group. Uh, we've got a site plan application for the 97 Russell Street that had the garage. Okay. Um, there's plans, building elevations, and an application form of other labels. You don't have enough green space. It's more than what's there now. That doesn't count. You got to have greens. You got to meet the requirement. Even though the rest of the site is non-conforming. That's correct. Because you're changing the use. Okay. If you well, we can pick up. Can. We can pick up. Okay. Another. I'd say it's only a couple hundred square feet. You have to turn it off by much. Yeah, you're only off by a little bit. Yeah. Um, of oh, 40 square feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not a lot. Where is the green space? On the side, in the back. Do we want to discuss anything? No, that? no, no, we're going to let just, okay. just quickly go over things. The very, very broad base. We, 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 can, we can cut the detail because it's not fair to have yeah. cut it apart too much no, tonight no. Or, or make too many comments. Just the obvious, very obvious mm -hmm. ones, that's all. And you've got parking for this building to be over here. We've got the in the table there is the anticipated right. <clears throat> There's fifty three spaces I think total. I guess I don't understand your table. Steve Lewis is gonna have ten. Yep. Future tenant six. Right. Esalon Coffee two. Okay, so they've got they've got a storage space there which Occupies two spaces. Oh, oh, oh for the this is for us, I was in here today. And so there's 31 extra spaces. All right. That could and be used for these guys or for this for these guys. Okay. All right. We can go into that in more detail. This dilapidated building is going to stay. That's going to stay, and there's building elevations and plans for that. He's, he, he hopes to use it as storage space. Okay. So it's weird. Try out a new system. Make sure the fire chief gets a copy of the plans. Right. So when you file one set of plans with the town clerk yep. with the filing fee, you're going to give her a second set of plans for the fire chief. Okay. Okay. So what do you got here? And there's seven in that file there. Okay, you can give one of these to the fire chief. Okay. Because I normally put one in their mailbox. Gotcha. So you could put that into their mailbox. Well, though, and okay. not, not the clerk. Hand yeah. it to the clerk. To the clerk. The clerk. Or the yeah. She will make sure he gets it. Understood. Okay. okay. And okay. do we need, um, is there one that's yeah, there 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 next there? Well, there's a building that should, should have been. Oh, with this one? Building okay. 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 Public hearing for 121. Should be fine. Okay. Oh, uh, is that where we're going to have the public hearing on the uh, regulations for 
Well, we're not going to make it for the seventh for sure. Let's, we can make the we can make the public hearing for the regulations on, on the first February, okay. first Tuesday in February. Okay. Right. Um, this project was something called Hadley Garage Redevelopment. Uh, sure. I didn't know what else to call it. Other no, than that's fine. Just ask they do. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's Ninety-seven plus. Ninety-seven plus. So yeah. Less glamorous name. yesterday and conservation this morning and they just wanted me to run these plans by you. We're trying to put a, a garage attached to a garage at 322 Russell Street behind Shulman Falls Coffee Roasters, some raised parents property. Okay. And an unused portion of the parking lot that's been out there for many, many years. Okay. And they just told me to submit the plan, show you guys the plans. This is the existing that was put in five years ago. They wants to put in a 55 foot by 28 more storage capacity. For, what is it for again? He's using it mainly for storage. No, where, where is it again? 322 Russell Street, Sunrise Printing. Okay. <coughs> the Shulman Falls Coffee Roasters. He only said site plan approval. All right. How big is the garage? 55 by 28. So it's over a thousand. 1500 square feet. 1500 square feet. Yeah. How big is the existing building? Sunrise Printing. Oh, this is not attached. Oh, I don't know how big the existing building is. Okay. Yeah, he'll, they'll need site plan approval. All right, so what do we go to next? Well, you got to, this gentleman just has a whole bunch of plans all drawn up. So you'll yep. need seven sets of plans, the application fee, drainage calculation, parking ca calculation, everything else. All right. Uh, okay. Who, who's the engineer on this? Uh, the uh, Sparkle, Bucket Sparkle. Well, I mean, never no, no, I'm not familiar with those. Associates okay. over in Stampton. Okay. The, uh, the site plan approval site, that is, well, it's not in the application. What is that? Where? Right, so next to Sunray, 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 Sunray's printing right next to uh, right next uh, to Stables. Right next to Stables. The old Johnny Greens. Oh, okay. It's all in the back parking lot. Yeah, yeah. No, that's, no, that's not. The, anyways, the, uh, yeah. the requirement for site plan approval right on the uh, zoning bylaws on the Hadley website. Go to, uh, what is it, Hadley, M-A? Hadley, M-A, O-R-G, and the bylaw is there, it's sort of a cookbook uh, of what you need. But let me check about the aquifer. Yeah, check. It's close. Yeah, but even about the garage that just left, we've got to check that, too. They're not in the aquifer. Floodplain, maybe, but not in that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, floodplain, right. He's going to engineer more. Okay, but if you, once you do drainage calculations, you'll need to get that drainage review and a whole application reviewed by one of our reviewing engineers. All right. And those are uh, Berkshire Design, Mark Donald. Do um, you have a list? Okay. You can go to any one of these companies and basically negotiate a price for them. You don't have to go to any one, any single mm -hmm. one. We don't tell you what there's a choice of around three or four. Uh, 
No, I guess I don't have it anymore. Uh, not in this notebook. Um, That's fine. We'll call Berkshire tomorrow. Okay. Because um, Berkshire, uh, Hatchmock, McDonald. Um, yeah, so it is in the actual book. Okay, so you're also in the act, so you're going to come, well, yeah, but you're going to comply with the act for anyway, because you're not putting it, you're going to put a garage, kind of, so just for storage, for sun rays, pretty Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's right through the existing blacktop. Okay. I mean, it's been there since the Johnny Bulls. Are. Okay. Well, we just have to mark it as, uh, okay, when, when you we come in, we'll apply it as a All special right. permit for that. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. The, uh, I've handed out to you guys the calendar for next year if you want to use it. If not, that's fine. Thank you. And uh, also a copy of, I marked up the Whateley bylaw of uh, Affordable Housing Trust for Hadley. Um, I sent everybody an email copy of it that has the printing in red on it. This one that didn't come out, well, it kind of came out white. But there are a few questions I have that we can go over later. Like, there's, you know, the, are the dollar amounts good? Do we want to change any other wording? Does everything look okay? And, you know, it's it's kind of general. But I took out some of the stuff that Whateley had because it was very particular, and I kind of laid up, made ours more a little bit more broad based. <coughs> uh, and I forgot to send you all the all the copies I have of affordability oh, stuff. So okay. I'll just get that out to you. Okay. Um, we do have a bill to pay to PVPC for waiting for Quarter Road. The amount of this is for their uh, contract with us for $7,500. This invoice is for $4,752.04. For regular, well, for when um, Patty and uh, Ken come here and talk to us and do the, do the work, consult, no, consulting work with the help, with the, how they help us. So, so let me just see that. that. But the, uh, one, we one did feel, Mark, uh, that I, I misinterpreted a little bit is that uh, Section 3 Board of Trustees uh, composed of at least five trustees determined by the select board, at least one of whom shall be a member of the select board and and then a boom, one at least of the planning board. I assume there was going to be one member of the planning board. Jim said no, the planning board is going to be the I'm going to, I'm going to recommend to the select board that for the time being, to kick this off and get it going, the five of us in one select board member be the board of trustees. Because we're up to speed on this. Yeah. And once everything gets going, if, you know, projects come along, then, it, then we can go from there. But for the time being, just a matter of having a, a fund and a group to manage the fund, that's all. So there, um, Ken had sent Jim and me an email that there must be another invoice on its way because we basically consumed the $7,500, but most of it was on MS4. And I talked to David Nixon, and there is an article for compliance with MS4. So I asked Ken to break out the, the portion of that bill that relates to um, MS4. And David Nixon will pay it out of DPW money. So maybe we should just I, I'm going to say, because there's a lot, a lot of patty time in here, and that is almost exclusively MS4, yeah. so let's not pay, let's not, let's leave this alone. Yeah, so we should be getting a revised bill. Okay. I just had that conversation with David today. Okay. So, uh, uh, okay. The qualifier I didn't take it with me. That's okay. So quarter seven, open the public hearing. The Hadley Planning Board will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, December 17, December 17, 2019, beginning 6.45 p.m. in room 203 of the Hadley Town Hall. The purpose of the hearing is to review the application of Philip Myers for a special permit 
change of use to a fitness and mar martial arts training facility at 35 Lawrence Plain Road, former Spice Company. Said change of use is a special permit issued by the Planning Board. Application and plan may be viewed in the Town Clerk's Office during normal business hours. Published twice in the Gazette, December 3 and 10. You're okay. on. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, board members, um, anybody else for the public hearing? Welcome. Um, so I'm here to uh, talk about the application for a special permit and the use of the, the <coughs> space at 35 Florence Plain Road, which we are in the process of purchasing. Um, and, uh, our, it is our intent to use the, uh, the building to provide movement-oriented fitness um, programs, including martial arts, dance, yoga, um, all you know, movement. Um, it is our belief that through movement, connection to the self, um, we can encourage healthy lifestyles, increase you know focus and confidence in our members, and create community um, through shared experience, um, as well as promote healthy uh, healthy bodies and minds. Um, I've been involved with the Shaolin Kung Fu Center of Hadley. We've been um, teaching classes for you know old and young life for 15 years now, um, and we believe very strongly in the value of these uh, programs to the community to um, people, especially children, uh, who attend. Um, and it is our hope to create a, you know, a kind of center place for the community um, at this location uh, for these kind of programs. That's, that's the pitch. Hours, that's the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> Hours and days of operation. Um, we will typically, um, it uh, depends, there'll be a number of different programs. Um, I can say from our experience with the martial arts school, we usually teach classes um, five days a week, uh, uh, sometimes you know, six depending on the uh, semester. We usually do less in the summer, more in the, um, during the school year when the children are more involved. Um, but you know, it's Monday, uh, Monday through Saturday, uh, pretty much. Um, for the most part, classes are typically held in the evening, um, since most of our clientele are children, we usually wait for them to be out of school um, from about four till eight in the evening. Okay. Typically. So not, not Some, a lot during the day usually? Some, sometimes um, on Saturdays we do uh, have a morning program from 10 to about 1.30 uh, uh, to 3. Um, uh, there's not a lot of activity during the day, but during the summertime, of course, we'll probably have more um, options, uh, especially doing extended programs for kids who are out of school. Yeah, but during, typically during the school year, Monday through Friday, there's not much operation. Not, there, not a lot during the middle of the day, yeah. People are at work and kids are at school, so, um, you know, I would like to be able to offer more uh, throughout the days, but it's when the clientele is available. Expected traffic, how much? So, uh, it obviously is going to um, depend on how many, uh, the student body, but we expect on average 10 to 12 cars, depending on the program. Um, sometimes there's a little overlap in the program, so that's when you get uh, a little bit more. But most people come, and especially for the kids' programs, they come and drop their kids off, and then they go, you know, go shopping or something like that, so they don't usually stay on site for very long. So what's the turnover? Do you have four classes, four to eight p.m., or are there different events going on? No, typically people coming and going? Yeah, so, so um, I think we wouldn't usually run more than one or two classes at a time. Um, this space should allow us to be able to overlap classes a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like maybe have a dance program running and a martial arts program running. Um, but, you know, so that there may be a little bit of overlap um, in programs. But, um, you know, a lot of times it's, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, run like a uh, kids program for like the beginner kids and then the intermediate or older kids will do, you know, their own program, that sort of thing. And how long is typically a class, like a, I mean, uh, um, so most of the kids programs are about an hour. Okay. Um, you know, the adult program that we run is an hour and a half uh, long, typically. Sometimes um, if we do throw like a special event mm -hmm. or a more intensive program, uh, for a workshop or something like that, that could run a couple hours for not as much as four or five, you know, depending on the training we're looking to do. Okay. Signage? Mm -hmm. uh, we do plan to use the existing signage uh, uh, on site just to modify it for the use, um, if uh, you know, for the um, for the martial arts school and you know, if we have a dance program or something like that, mm -hmm. we have multiple signs to mm -hmm. for advertising. But just for your information, mm -hmm. there. Part of going through the site plan approval is I send out a notice to all the yep. departments in town. 
if there's any unpaid fees, unpaid taxes, unpaid bills, mm -hmm. they notify me. And there's an unpaid water bill okay. for the spice company. Now, I don't know who's responsible for it, if it's the spice company or the owner of the building itself, but it's not, it's, it comes to like, I want to say six or seven hundred dollars. Okay. We can, we will not issue an approval until that bill is paid, until That's proof right. comes to us. So what we could do tonight is let's assume we issue a conditional approval once the treasurer or accountant or whoever it is notifies the clerk mm -hmm. that the bill has been paid, he will then issue yeah. the approval letter. But until that bill has been confirmed paid, I don't know, it's it something, you know, I don't know who, who paid, I tried to get a hold of the owner, mm -hmm. but when I had her, I have her cell phone number, but that cell phone goes to the Spice Company, so I said, well, I don't want to get involved okay, in yeah. this. I said, I, want to look, I tried to notify the owner who didn't have her number. Okay. I'm letting you know. And I, just, I mean, it's like it's not a monumental bill, but it's still an invoice. Okay, no, yeah, so just let them know yeah. that somebody's going to pay that bill. Mm -hmm. I don't know who it is, and let the, plan, the planning board know when it's been paid. Great. Yeah, we've been we're in a lot of contact with the owner, so we'll okay. make sure that that gets settled. So no just, just a little detail, but I want to make sure I don't want to surprise you with it. Great. No, thank you. Or hold anything up. Absolutely. Unnecessarily. Other questions from the board? Lighting? Any change in the lighting? Uh, no, there's going to be no changes to the um, current layout. You know, the lighting at the <coughs> or the outside lighting. No changes to the the building, the exterior, anything like that. There was a question about the numbering system there, 35 or 37? Yeah, that's a, a, I still have a question about that too. Yeah. I know the deed says 37, but they... There's two, two pieces of paper, one says 35, one says 37. Yeah. It's not a big deal for us. I mean, it is what it is, whoever the correct number is. What number is I've been yeah. 35 Lawrence Plain Road, Bay of okay. Firewood, since the goal. Okay. And they gave, the, for some reason, gave them the same number as mine. Yeah, yeah. So we, we are more than happy being 37. Yeah, we, I mean, we don't yeah. need the 35. If, yeah. if 37 is what's on the deed, so the building paper, inspector, happy with that. The building inspector assigns numbers. Sure. So, uh, and he's not here tonight, but uh, you can contact his office. They should have the answer to that. And okay. if there is a duplication, they should know about it. So, yeah. well, Timmy knows about it, but he's been telling them to change it, but they won't. Who's they? Yeah, uh, that woman. Who I oh, okay. Okay, well, we'll be a new owner. It's going to yeah, be we're happy to correct it easy enough. So, so you because know, if the fire trucks come, they're going to go to that spice place. Well, if there's a fire, they're going to know what they want. It's going to be the place to hit place. It's going to be the place to hit place. It's going to be pretty totally obvious. Agree. So 37 Absolutely. is the correct number. Yeah, You're 35. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it should be 37. Yes. Okay. I think it's what the D it says. Be. Yeah. So we're okay. happy with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's, yeah. Anyways. Okay. Any other questions of the board? No. Um, the Spice Company, do we know what hours it operated? Was it? They, 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 they it's a they're kind of, they're, going they're, 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 there's, they have a work crew that starts early in the morning and they work until late at night, but it's really a crew of probably two or three people and there's no customers. The only customers that, are, that come in is on Friday, Saturday, Sunday when they have their little store up front open. That's typically what, 10 to 3 or something? Yeah, so their hours are limited for the actual customers. Because I was just wondering, if they don't have, you said you weren't planning to change the lighting, but if, they're, if, if they were not having activity outside with customers, you might find that with I don't know, kids and adults you might need lighting. So I'm yeah, well, I believe they do have adequate, at least okay. they okay. okay. seem to have Yeah, they have, lighting. So they have some kind of lighting out there because it is yeah, a there's a few windows around. Yeah, okay. so... Any other questions of the board? Audience, yes, sir. I'm a direct debutter, Mike Balloon, 39, <laughs> Lawrence Plain. There was a question that Mrs. Kirby or Miss Kirby and I have discussed about a light on the back where the garage bay is. Okay. She's been very well with it. She told me she they wouldn't use it because it directly shines into my back <laughs> of my house. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the only issue with that. That being said, now that this is going to be open for a more uh, business type than Miss Kirby ran it, is it going to require a sprinkler system? That because is so. 
that's up to the building. That's that's outside the jurisdiction of us. Okay. But it's a good question for the building <laughs> inspector and the fire department. I don't know. Yeah, they all. He, when we approve this board, we're simply looking kind of from the outside of the building, like okay. zoning, parking, drainage, stuff like that. I mean, all that is, is, is adequate. When you get to the inside of the building, he's, excuse me, the applicants are specifically notified and noticed that the only approval this board is giving is zoning. Mm -hmm. Anything to do with building, fire safety, and, an OS, and, and board of health, they still have to go through the channel. We are by no means trying to bypass that. So okay. that's, that's yep. a good question because of the change of use. I don't know. Yeah, that is a good well, I, we did read on the thing that we got from our town clerk that they're doing something with the septic system. Yes. yes. So now, how does that play? Do you guys go? No, we that don't, or not? We, we, he can explain what that happened, yeah. but in, in a nutshell, the original septic system was designed for the small use right. that it was. Yeah. Since he's having obviously more customers or people inside of it, the system needs to be enlarged to whatever it has to be enlarged to. And um, they're yeah. going to be going forward with that, whatever, obviously, when the weather is allowed. Yeah, um, probably, okay. probably Martin. We're just um, really, uh, we've been working with Alan Weiss, and we think it's just extending the leach field um, a little bit, just a couple That's, extra uh, trenches. Board of Health jurisdiction. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am? I have huh? some questions. What's the definition of local business? It's right in the zoning bylaw. Um, it's okay. <coughs> to accommodate smaller business activity, which is located at the edge of residential areas, but which serves a larger trade area than the immediately surrounding residential neighborhoods. That's it. That's it. That, that's, that's, that's that's the definition in a nutshell. And then it, when we when you go through the zoning table, it has all sorts of topics that is the local business covers. For example, um, probably the big, almost any business that's allowed on Route 9 could be allowed in scale in the local business district. Okay? Some things require special permit, like a change of use to this kind, they call this an assembly area. <clears throat> what cannot be done is, let's say, um, well, his parcel is a good one. He has a single lot that's probably a little over an acre. Behind him, Mr. Keeler has a lot that goes beyond, but the, it's, it's still some of his, you know, your, some of your land is in a business district, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Those two lots can be combined, but you cannot take, let's say between the two of them they have a five acre plot. He has an acre and a half, and let's say Mr. Keeler has three and a half acres. And I don't know what the numbers are. I'm just putting those numbers together as, as a, as a, to, sh to explain to you. On a, on a one acre building, an acre and a half building, he could build approximately a, probably a 16,000 square foot building and meet zoning. Mr. Keeler, on a three and a half acre plot, could put up roughly almost a 40,000 square foot building and meet zoning. If you combine the two plots, you'd have five acres. No building can be larger than a building Mr. Keeler could put If you've got five acres, you could put up theoretically a 60,000 square foot building. So if you take two lots that are existing today by separate owners and combine them, you cannot create a very, very big lot and put a very big building on. You can only put a building on each individual plot that allows, meets current zoning for each individual lot. Did I make sense with that or did I confuse you? Well, a little bit, but is he going to be paving there? No. No, we have no plans to do any paving or changes to the Because I have an issue with that, too. Sure. And originally, the spice factory was supposed to put in a retaining pond, and that didn't happen. That's correct. Because that retaining pond was 12 feet deep below the level of Route 47. Okay, I have another and, issue. And we told the developer, we told the engineer at that time, that is way too big and way out of scale for what the property is. This property has an underground drainage system that works. Okay. When Mr. Benjamin's property was approved, nobody thought about where the water was going to go, and it comes across to a block drainage dish that 
flood the Smith's property and our mm -hmm. property. So if there's any more water coming off that, it's going to affect us. And nothing has been done about that at all. The town, Mr. I, we, we, that, that's, that happened a number of years ago. Um, the water coming off of his prop, off of the Spice Company property will be no worse three months from now than it is today. It'll be the same. As far as the Benjamin property, flowing water, the, the selectmen and the town allowed him to tie into the drainage system that's on 47, which wasn't supposed to be which done. Which is blocked. And it floods our property. Yeah, but that, that just made more water to go into that ditch and because over near the big button ball tree there, it's blocked. That that tree blocks it. It's been blocked for years, and it just, so just overflows the ditch down into uh, Wilson's property and on ours. And ours too. It floods it. Yeah, that, that, that's a separate topic from what we have in front of us. I I, I understand that. I live across the street. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> so the uh, <laughs> the select board and the DPW have. Uh, have money to buy ditch cleaning equipment that's a priority. Yeah, but they don't use it on my ditch. Well, <laughs> they haven't. It's the only it. ditch that never gets cleaned. They haven't got it yet. I would suggest is that, you. Is that what the override is for? For the no, that no, that was that, the last that, override. That, that, was, that was that was approved. Oh, so they have their that was approved now. in the spring. Okay. But I mean, it's a separate topic. <laughs> but it's a good one because we want, we don't want neighbors to walk out of here thinking we're ignoring you. They have ditch cleaning equipment. They have been cleaning some minor ditches. Get a hold of the DPW director, um, Chris Okafor, and he is very anxious to be cleaning ditches and clearing because he, he's getting. He will be getting the equipment or making use of the equipment. Is a better word in the spring. They have been cleaning some ditches and it's been making a decent difference in certain parts of the town where they've done minor cleanings. Um, he may need a written easement from you to clean your ditch, and from the sound of it, you're going to be more than anxious to give it to him. Yes. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and hopefully, a lot of the problems will clear up. I'm not going to clear up in, you know, the next, there's a lot of cleaning to be done because it's been ignored for, I don't know, 40 years. Yeah. But they can make some good starts on this, and especially if you get a hold of Mr. Okafer and ask him, you know, tell the problem on 47, because that's, that's, that, Floods a decent amount of area. They're not just a property, does, but yeah. even Route 47 at times. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. So Any? You, you have no plans to increase the parking lot in the back. You nope. go back. No, it's gonna we're, no, what it is right what now. What about is if you have us. you have tournaments? We don't do tournaments. Competitions. On site, no. no, I can so sure, but yeah. every now and then we'll have an event that has maybe 30 or 40 people. But we're yeah, not going to be, workshop. we don't have any plans to, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we don't want them ending up parking on our driveway going up to our <coughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, the uh, the parking on site should be more than sufficient for, for our needs. Okay. For sure. How many okay. how many cars will the parking lot accommodate now the way it is, you know? Um, you know, uh, trying to estimate, um, I think it could yeah. probably fit maybe 20. 20 spots or 20? so, 20 to 23. Yeah, maybe a few. How, how, big, is, how big is the, the building? Map. What's the footprint of the building? The, it's about 3,800 square feet. So you have 7,600 square feet of parking. Yeah. They, they have way more than 7,600 yeah. square feet yeah. of parking. Yeah, okay. You know, they, they have a, they have, a quite, they have quite a bit more parking. I mean, for the Spice Company, you never saw more than even a busy day, maybe <laughs> half a dozen cars. Half a dozen yeah. cars. <laughs> you know, um, but <laughs> and even then, and they, they and if they park right in front of the building, the whole back part towards the middle. There's room in the middle, and there's room towards the uh, southern property line. I believe that the lot was the parking lot was built so they could get the tractor trailers in to unload. Right. Yeah. 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 Sense. If it appears that we're not addressing the drainage or the parking or the green space or anything mm -hmm. like that, it was all previously addressed and, and peer review engineer studied it and said the drainage would work, the parking was adequate. Well, that project went through site plan approval when it was originally yeah. constructed. Yeah. And since there are no exterior changes or site changes, 
the uh, we're not going over all of that again. But just, just getting back to the point you raised about the supposed to be a drainage pond, when the original first set of plans came in, the, I believe there was a pond that was 12 feet deep. It was going to be 10 feet below the grade level of Route 47. And you could just imagine that's a, that's a hazard. And it was massive. So and, when, and when the engineer came back in for the second meeting, I said, you've got to do something. Well, I'm, I'm designing it to help the town drainage. I said, no, just design it for your site drainage. He came in for the second plan. He hadn't changed a thing. And we told him, no, make it for the site, not for anything else. And the next meeting came in. She had gotten rid of the engineer, hired somebody different. It was an underground system. And the ground is just, I mean, there's never been a drainage problem, as far as I know, in anything over there. And whatever she has works. So it's going to continue to work because there's no other changes going to be planned. So just so everybody understands that. Any yes, ma'am. Um, basically it's it's gonna be lessons for children. Um, we teach uh, classes for all ages. Okay. So, yeah, right. so well, as specifically ages four and, and up. So we four. have a class yeah. for little ones, you know, um, you know, Slightly bigger ones, kids, but not, not like a health club type of thing. It's just going to be. No, it's yeah, it's more yeah, like classes. We don't need another health club, really. Oh no, <laughs> yeah. and, and we, um, you know, with this with the stuff that we teach, we teach um, you know ways ways of moving, which are more kind of like a class you know curriculum oriented um, sort of thing. So it's not so you know people don't just come in and jump around. It's Any it's a very structured per outdoor program. activities in the summertime. So during during the summer we do like to to train outside um, if we can. I mean there's a, a lot of green space at the site, um, you know, which is just to be during uh, class times or you know if we run uh, an extended program for kids during the summer we do like to have um, chances for them to get outside. Um, that is right. something that we do. Because formerly we do living like next to the elementary yeah. school it, it gets pretty loud <laughs> sometimes. Yeah, so I'm just yes. wondering yeah. how much activity would be in the summertime. So in yeah. class sizes, you know, between no. 10 and 20 kids, it's not like, you know, a huge quantity of like outdoor yeah. recess. Yeah. Um, also, we have been, just so you know, we have been in operation in, in Hadley for 15, actually Hadley and Amherst uh, initially for about 15 years. And today, and we've done outdoor activities in various, we've done, been in a number of different spaces. So you're not a startup company? We're then. not a startup company. No, no, we've been, we, we haven't, been doing this we for haven't a while. had any complaints about, about noise level or anything like that. Um, no. You know, of course, we're, you know, we understand that somebody had an issue yeah. with noise, but I, we, it, you know, we, it's about discipline, about, um, we're not going to have kids like running around and screaming and yelling. Um, so. Yeah, so. Who are you so, looking at now then? Uh, right now we're at Mill Valley Road. Okay. Um, we're in there temporarily. We were at 231 for a while. 231 Russell it's Street. Uh, the dance um, studio next near Randy's. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Before that, we were immersed next in a building similar to Mill Valley that had like, Comcast. Yeah. All right. And the, the kids are well supervising. will stay right there because we have horses next door yes. and we have electric fence. Yeah, and absolutely. They will stay can, on site. Yeah, that can really hurt. Yes, yeah, no, that's good, that's good yeah. to know. Um, you know, we, we value, <laughs> we, we highly value structure in, in the programs that we teach. Uh, it's, you know, we think it's very important for kids of that age to, to have a very structured program. So even when we do do outdoor activities, they're not just kind of let off the leash and like, okay, go run around. It's a very it's, busy road, too. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And we, we, we totally have a good, have that. really good student to teacher ratio. Oh, um, yeah. So, yeah, we as well as charge, and then we have two other uh, adult, two other adult instructors, and a whole team of teenage, teenage team leaders that are not very responsible. And so, we never, we're never leaving them, you know, on the right. Yeah. 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 So. What kind of good summer hours are you guys like, looking to do if you're doing classes for them? So, excuse me, excuse me, so, excuse me, excuse me. I don't mind you talking like that, but could you ask, speak loud so everybody could hear you? That's all. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just wondering what summer yeah. hours would be. So, um, so for the regular the regular classes, um, they're still typically um, in the evening, um, afternoon, evening. So starting around like four for the the really little ones. 
um, and then going until eight for the uh, adult. And our regular but classes are usually only three or four times a week in the summer. We cut back a little bit, yep. and then we do yep. um, one or two weeks of summer camps, and those the summer camp hours would be nine, from nine to three. Um, yeah, and, and then have indoor and outdoor activities during that time. Yeah, more structured. Yeah, predominantly okay. indoor. Okay. Somebody else went to summer camp out the road. Huh? Oh. Somebody else went to summer camp right up the road. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes. Cedar Ridge teams do, but they don't do more. Yeah. For 12 years. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is it done this long? is probably the most exciting thing that's happened to that neighborhood in 20 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're excited and hope that it works out. Yeah. We're definitely very excited about it. Other questions? One other question is, are they going to be complaining, you know, bar stoves when they spread the manure up there? <laughs> are they going to start complaining about that? Well, we, I mean, right right in their D, they have a thing that says, yeah, well, this that is, doesn't mean nothing. They, well, don't, they don't live in town, so you know what happens. You live in heaven, you get that in We've been in for a while, so it's, Where this place is, we get the smell. Yeah. Well, they got a spice company. At least the orders from the spice company was sometimes round out the smell from the Yeah, it'll, 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 you know, uh, yeah. And, you know, again, it's, you know, we, we do martial arts. You know, it's sometimes having to suffer is part of the program. You know? So that's the kid. They can, they Fresh can handle it. air. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's farm, you know, it's farm time. That's what we expect. After every hay mowing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Guaranteed, too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just hope it rains right away. Yeah, you just don't keep your windows Actually, open. it's not so bad now with the digester. It, it's got a different, it's got a different yeah. order now with the digest. I've noticed that, you know. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> um, any other comments or questions? Hearing none. Just to make a Great. motion. Okay. This will be a conditional approval, like I said, that when course, the invoice yeah. is paid, let let Mr. Dwyer have make sure Mr. Dwyer knows and mm -hmm. he'll get it out. Okay. Great. Yeah, we'll take care of that. Seventeenth. Uh, Today's seventeenth. I said I was only the 18th and everything. Yeah, we're going to be filing for yeah, okay. the new year. Is it going to be a do, doing business as, or are going to be a... I'm uh, creating an LLC for the purchase. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the come to school with the DBA. Yeah, we'll be Okay, so I will make a motion to grant the application for change of use a local business special permit finding that the project is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the bylaw the project is not detrimental to the established or future character of the neighborhood there are no exterior alterations there will be no site changes the approval is uh, for the fitness and martial arts training proposed by Philip Myers. Philip Myers. Um, and any other use is prohibited without further approval of the planning board. Uh, this approval is subject to approval of other boards if and as required, including the Conservation Commission, the Sewer Commission, and Water Commissioners. Any project changes directed by other boards must be approved by the planning board. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Oh, I should make, uh, let me just add, uh, subject to uh, conditional condition of payment of water bill. Well, yeah, could the other have saying yeah, that's the only one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, thank you. And then I changed the address too, right? <laughs> yeah, the 37. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah.
change address to number 37, if okay with the building inspector. Okay, so add those two changes. Okay. You got your checklist? Do you have the checklist yeah. that you have to sign? Oh, we don't need it for this. Yeah. 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 Plus, he's already been in contact with all the other boards already. That's why he knows we have the subject system. I changed the subject system. Yeah. We're using that for waivers. When people come in for a waiver, so they don't. This one's going to. He's going to get the whole text. I'll get to the file before we leave. Okay. So I'll, I'll put the available labels in it. I'm asking the envelopes. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thanks Good Christmas, everybody. Good, Good luck. 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 Oh, okay. um, um, just a clarification, how long does it take for filing this? And then there's the, there's the there's a 20 day appeal period once, been filed, once the paperwork has been filed with the town clerk. Okay. Um, just in wire, I'll see what that uh, takes. I will, if, if I, I'll get it written up. So you just need to get the confirmation that bills are been paid. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, well, obviously, with the holidays coming up, I'll try to get it ready to go, but um, yeah. sort of control when it actually gets filed. Yeah, we're going to contact her as soon as we can start get that. On the side of the yeah. risk. Well, the other one's not even moved out. He doesn't even have the building. Yeah, I know. I'm still yeah. trying to get to the purchase. Yeah. The, the yeah. Part, the whole, part of the hard deal of getting everything filed is the closing yeah. and getting, he doesn't own the building yet. The other. Spice Company is still going to be there until the end of the month. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and we're, yeah, I think they're moving out at the end of the month, and then we get to finish our due diligence period in January, and then our hope is that the closing will be in February 3rd, but it does ride a little bit on this. this part. Well, then that, sh that should be fine. That so even if uh, this doesn't get done until after the holidays, there'll still be a 20, only a 20-day appeal period. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, and for the sound of it, doesn't sound like anybody's going. There's no, no hard. There's no hard point with these. That's you're taking over, which is a good sign. Yeah. Great. Phil, is that twenty calendar or your business day? calendar? Calendar. <laughs> so, so your next meeting is after the holidays. The next meeting. And at that point, you would finalize the wording on it. No, or no, no, no. Okay, that's and, all and set. We, the wording's been finalized. Right. The only okay. thing that needs to get done is to Mr. Dwyer to type up the, what he okay. just read. Okay. And, for, and that goes to the town clerk. The notification that the invoice been paid. And then yep. file with the town clerk. Okay. Okay. I'm just I'm the broker involved on this. Yes. My yeah. name's Pat Patterson okay. Jones, okay. and I just want to be able to tell the owner what's happening. That's yeah, all. That's fine. Yeah. Um, and I will make sure that the water bill gets straightened yeah. out. Yeah. So just we weren't aware of that. Yeah. yeah so, they were, I, like I said, try to get a hold of. Diane, right, when I have a cell phone, when I have then she that right when I dial the cell phone, Spice Company picked up. I said, well, I don't want to start. I know Diane pretty decently. I don't know the new owner, and I didn't want to start saying get anybody mad, upset with each other. Right. I says, right. yeah, I had no way to get a hold of Diane. I didn't have a right number. She probably so, doesn't even know that it's unpaid. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. sure, because I don't know who's yeah. responsible for paying it. That's why I also. Most likely the tenant. So, so I, yeah. I, that's why yeah. I, I kind of didn't want to raise right. the eye, because it's, it's not a monster bill. If it's notified tonight, I'm sure it will be taken so. care of. Okay. So I'm not worried about it not getting paid. No. Yep. Yep. Thanks for saying that. Yeah. So yeah. just for clarity, I, mm -hmm. I would suggest you do this. Once you get it paid, you pay it through the to the collector's office. Yep. They'll stamp it as paid. If you could uh, email a copy of that to me, okay. and you have my planning at Hadley MA address, yep. then that would be, once I get that, I'm not going to file this with the clerk and say it's conditioned on payment. I'm not going to file it until it is paid. Yeah. But if you email it, email the paid receipt to me, then I will know it's done and I will proceed to file with the clerk. Great. Okay. Sounds good. And I don't know what hours or what days she may be closed over the holidays. So there, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of balls in the air here. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll get on that. Sooner the better. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah.
there's two weeks when no one's going to want to do anything with holidays in the middle of the week. Yeah, so we want to get that. It's going to be kind we'll of... try to get this as fast uh, as possible. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah so she'll, she'll be motivated. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, I don't think we really have anything to, else to talk about. Um, just take a look. Just take a look at that housing trust fund that I emailed you and gave you a copy of. See if you think anything should be changed, especially the dollar values. Do you think they're okay? It should be a little higher. I think they should be any lower. But uh, you know, should they be any different? That's the same thing I mean. Yeah. So, uh, one other thing, <laughs> folks, could you move a lot? Could you uh, move away from the door, please? Thank you. Yes, sir. And the years they've been there with the there has been some discussion. Jim and I went to a meeting with the building committee. Um, so the municipal building committee is talking about the possibility of relocating some town hall offices to the Goodwood Library structure on and after the completion of the new library. Um, one, op one possibility is the planning board might be relocated there. Uh, so Jim and I were talking with the Municipal Building Committee. There's issues of handicapped accessibility. There are issues of how much work needs to be done. Uh, is it going to have to be brought fully up to code? So there are a lot of open issues there. But I just wanted to let you know that it is on the horizon, sort of, as something that uh, might be discussed further. Um, so no action required, uh, very vague on details. We told them we needed a, a meeting room this size, which we could share with Park and Rec as an as a activity space, um, because we'll only be using it twice a month. Uh, Park and Rec is another department that is earmarked to go to, to Goodwin. Um, we need an office about the size that we have today, and um, you know, they asked if we could, they, were, they talked about, you know, first floor, second floor, cellar. I says, you know, putting us in the cellar of the good one is fine. We don't care. As long as if we have an office and the storage space, that they'd be next to each other, not all over the place. And having all those files on slab rather than on uh, second, wooden joists the they second did, floor. They, they, didn't, they weren't <laughs> sure that if they, put the, if they put our files on the second floor, if the second floor was strong enough, I says, we asked that question. Well, we could put them on the outside. Could do this. They said, "Could you be in a cellar?" We said, "I don't want to be in a cellar." We, we said, "The cellar no was light. light. No light. Well, well it's dark when we're in." Well, Mike, Mike, what was what was the last time you were actually in the planning board office? Well, I, the last time I was in the cellar of a building was fourth grade, Millie Fleet, but they looked down. Well, they, they, the, the, the lighting would be would be upgraded to so yeah. you could see and stuff like that. That wouldn't be a problem. But th that's something that we, we don't actively use the office uh, for much beyond storage. Right. So we would ha our, our, that would not be our meeting space. Oh, okay. the meeting room. Oh, the, oh, okay. the meeting room will, oh, will, oh, will oh, certainly okay. be on the first floor. Were, oh, oh, no, 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 no. Just a storage. Just, the, just the, the file yeah, cabinet storage. I knew they didn't like us. I know they didn't like us that much. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the the meeting room will virtually for sure be on the first floor. Okay, that, that's acceptable. Okay, and. Uh, we're just not sure. They're not sure how to divide it up. And they, you know, they were still. They were going to be hiring some kind of a what was the guy's architectural name? consultant. Some, some consultant to take a look at it and see how it could be divided up. What makes sense? What would be needed? Um, you know, as far as both building code and plumbing and those things. And ADA. Yeah, because they said well, they weren't going to make. They weren't necessarily going to make all the floors ADA uh, accessible. And for a general comment, that's okay. However, planning board is a good example, as well as a few others. We are an elected board. Should somebody get elected to the planning board that is handicapped and our office is in the cellar, 
you must now give them full access to the seller, ADA compatible. Right. And it's not something you can say, well, we can have somebody know. Right. It's gonna, it, it, the law is what the law is. And they says, yeah, you're right. And so they're looking at, you know, those issues as well. And they can have an answer, and that's okay. I would just amend what Mr. Dwyer said at the beginning, which I think you said you and Jim went, but I was there oh, too. Oh, yes, that's I right. Was very that's quiet. right. You, you were there that's too. Right. Yes. Mark Dunn was there. Yes. We, that's right. It was uh, the building committee, which was David Phil, Tim Nyhart, um, Dave Bushkevitz, Dave Tudrin, Bill, myself, you, uh, and then there the lady from the Park and Rift. I forgot what her name was. Jenny. Jennifer? Jen. Jenny. There's Jenny. already Jenny. a Jennifer. We, Jenny. we have Jenny. Okay. Yeah. And then the gentleman from the. Oh, yeah. There was a, a Dave. Was it Dave Regish? Uh, no, he's on the. Uh, it was uh, Andy Klopaki from Andrew Park and Klopaki, Rec. But there was a Regish that was there as he's well. He's on the Municipal Building. Or he's on the Municipal Building me. And, and, and Mark Klopaki. No, 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 Mark. And That's Dave's. not Mark. That was uh, Andy, Andy, Klopaki. Andy. Andy was there. Yeah. And the David Phil that was there was senior. Senior. Yes. Getting yeah, back right. to this trust thing, just one comment. Uh, section four, powers of trustees, B. It is, it is. Yeah, section four, page 28 hours. Section four. Oh, okay. okay. It says, it doesn't make any sense. To purchase and re retain real or personal property, including without restriction, this one, that doesn't make any sense. Investments that yield a high rate of income or no income. You don't. You don't want to say that. Well, that, I, this is exactly. I, I know, I know. I'm just saying we got to change that. Yeah, that's fine. To generate yeah. current income or no income, or or have a have a current rate of return or no return. But, you know, I don't even know why you have to put that in there. It doesn't matter if you're buying real, real property. It doesn't matter if it's generating income or not generating income. And, and, and like I said, these are cars you want to hold. I got it. I yeah. got it. Okay. Yeah. This is right from the West, the Whateley thing. So you don't yield a high rate of income; you yield a high rate of return or high yield, but not a high rate. Because that's relative. <laughs> it's all relative. Okay. Back to my original thought, Jim. Uh, it seems like under Section Three, the Select Board is going to do all the appointing. That's right. What if they don't want to appoint? They the have board? to. Well, State law says. Well, no. But. Yeah. Uh, it, what if the select board doesn't want to appoint the planning board? Correct. Oh, they don't have to. They don't have to. But I don't. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Um, there were. Uh, there was a meeting of the affordable affordable housing focus group that Christian Stanley is running with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Um, and there were, let's see, um, our guy from the Planning Commission, uh, a woman whose name I forget from the Planning Commission, um, uh, I don't, don't remember if David was there. Uh, Chris, yes, David was there. Uh, Christian Stanley was there. Uh, Emma Dragon from the Board of Health. And there were two other people civilians, we'll call them, uh, who are interested in it. So um, you will see what the, what the interest is. Um, well, these civilians will obviously have a interest to get more affordable housing into the community. And if there's only one member of the planning board, uh, Which, you know, they're going to overwhelm the thought. Well, but the, but the trust document but, tells them what they can do. But you don't have you only have a small bucket right now to do this you don't have a massive bucket that you can go out and do all kinds of things you only got roughly three hundred thousand dollars okay if you use CPA fund that's a whole different set of regulation that, that tie into it and you need town meeting approval to expend that money if it's, if it's over a certain dollar though. hmm oh you're talking about the CPA so, and the trust fund. No, I, thought the the way, I thought if it was under a certain amount. Under a certain amount, the planning board has authority. Or what? the trustees have trustees to, ex to expend a large amount, <clears throat> the way this is worded, you'll need town meeting approval. Right. That's specifically worded so that you can't go, so the, so the trustees can't go wild spending money. 
and beyond. And the if enemy. it doesn't say that, so if it doesn't say that, if you read it, that it, if that's not the way you read this document, we want to know that so we can make it clear that that's the case. I got to point out, it is the Hadley Affordable Housing Trust. That's the point of the trust. Affordable housing. It doesn't mean you have to do anything today or next week or next year. That's correct. But if the money's going to be there for future projects, hopefully this thing will build up over time. That is correct. So I think as a practical matter, the select board will be very happy to have the planning board and volunteer to be the initial committee. I'm not so sure because there seems to be an undercurrent when we mentioned we have 13% of our housing as affordable, they say well, we should have more. And as a community, I think we've done our fair share compared to the surrounding community. That is true. But I go back to the comment, Joe. We only have $350,000 in the fund. You can, you can do very limited amount with that. You can encourage, you can encourage a, a, a developer that's really interested in putting in. You can give them a little bit of money, but it's not like you can go out and do $350,000 isn't going to buy a lot of affordable housing. Well, mm -hmm. They can leverage it. Some, some towns are leveraging that amount of money and borrowing against it too. So, but that's a whole different story. Yeah, but that's well, we can talk about it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. It'll be on the agenda. We don't have anything else on the agenda for the first January. Period. That's correct. So we can okay. be ready. To, be ready to talk about that. You know, find out. Like I said, make sure that what I said about not being able to expend the big bucks. Mm -hmm. Without Tom Megan approval, I want to make sure that this is that that's in here. Okay. okay. Has anyone talked about this future affordable housing and where it's going to be located in town? Whether it'll be on bus routes or not yet. No. Well, that's key. I mean, they need, if they need affordable housing, they probably don't have cars, and they got to be on a bus route, so it's going to be have to. Well, so these are all things we discuss in January. Okay, well, yep. Bus routes, sewer. Uh, I mean, there's. Those are all and what are the sanctions? I mean, you know, you say if you don't have 10% of your housing as uh, affordable, that somebody can come in and overrule the zoning and put up their housing, but it hasn't seemed to have the clout as one has anticipated because certain communities only have one, two, three, four percent. Well, that's true, but. It's not Hadden, a lot. South Hadden has zero, but who wants to talk about transportation problems? <laughs> yeah, there's no, uh, likewise, uh, something like Plainfield. Um, yeah, right. Coming to Plainfield. Oh, I'm talking to South Hadley, Hatfield, Sunderland. Yeah. Well, Sunderland has got, Sunderland has got a, got a 40, 40B they're, shut They're down building there. it now. They're building yeah. it. That, that's getting jammed down their throat. Where are they building like it? Well, where is that in Sunderland? That's right behind uh, a corner back of Plumber Tree Road and, uh, okay. and Route 116 over okay. there. Um, and corner. If you go down yeah. Wild West Shattuck Road. And take a quick right. It's in the woods back there. Yeah. And that was when we're um, in Sunderland. The rent on all of those apartments on 116 is considered affordable. No, 47, is it? For, uh, no, 116. Well, there's one on there. They're 40. The no, one they one, don't count. There's they don't one count. On, yeah, I know. But people don't understand that. The yeah. one uh, there is a complex on Route 47, right? And there is there are several complexes on 116, right? And across all of those, the market has set a rental for uh, student apartments in Sunderland that is within the affordability guidelines. But none of those apartments are counted for uh, towards um, the affordable housing because none of them are none of the properties are deed restricted to be affordable. Which can only be changed if you change the state laws. Right? Just, Correct. The states really screwed this whole thing up. I gotta say, they just really screwed have screwed it up. Market forces, as Bill just told you, will take care of the problem, but they don't want it because it allows a vast bureaucracy to live in Boston. Of this. That's my editorial comment. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I um, seem to hear some sentiment at the public meetings about. It. The, the range that like, you know there's affordable housing and there's nothing in between that that was I heard a number of people talking about that and I don't know that can we do anything about that well, well yeah. you know you know we've got a thing called Hampshire County and Franklin County and Hamden County 
it's easy to cross the boundary and go someplace else. Each community, I think it's foolish to think that each community is responsible for this. That's why you've got fluidity. Oh, when my sister got married, they were living in an apartment up in Sunland, Donna. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. you know, people went to, gr to Greenfield and they gentrified it, but uh, that was, you know, this whole thing about it has to be Hadley is foolishness. Yeah. The other point, Mark, is, I mean, your, your point is a valid one. People talk about this constantly, and there was an article about the uh, about an economist that is, he is from the American Home Builders Association, and he calls it the five L's. Uh, lumber has almost doubled in the past seven to ten years. Labor has increased, if you can get it. Lending, no longer can you get away with 5% down. You've got to have a legitimate 15, sometimes 20%. Lot size, because of all the restrictions, whether it's APR or view shed, or the land is becoming constricted, so the lot size is more expensive. And the other one is local. Uh, we're talking spade toad frog. We're talking the spotted turtle that took away four lots on Shattuck Road. So a lot of these local things uh, are contributing to the high price of housing. So to expect that a community can turn all of this around, I think, is, is a little bit out of bounds, too. So. Yeah, in 1976, I drove my Volkswagen to Houston, Texas. I had $300 in my pocket, a guitar, and a feather bed. <laughs> and I got a beautiful apartment, one bedroom with a swimming pool, tennis court for 150 bucks a month, okay? It was on a bus route. I worked in Houston. But the point is, there is affordable housing in this country. You don't have to put it all here. Move someplace else. That's how you grow up. So the other part of the equation is uh, that um, if you wanted a range of housing, one, one way to do it, and He'll give you the counterpoint in a moment, but one, one way to do it is make it easier to build it. Yeah, sure. And in theory, <clears throat> if it's less expensive to build, it can be rented at a lower price point. Sure. But uh, in practicality, people see what rents are going for in this area, and if there's not an incentive to keep them capped in some way, you know, if you build something cheap and rent it for a Red high. That's that's more profit. So um, I guess that's that's and, both sides and, of the coin. Well, and to your point, it's easier to build things in Houston, Texas, than it is in Howley, Massachusetts. Well, Houston had no zoning for a long that's, time. That's but right. That's right. For example, to Bill's point, the apartments that are being put up in the Mill District in North Adams, where the Coles Lumber Yard used to be, 1950s, one bedroom. That's. And they're getting it. So the students certainly contribute a lot to the high price. And part of it is our microeconomy and the demand. And uh, you know, the comments that were made at town meeting when, about the rezoning for uh, senior housing were, you know, they're all fair comments, but the fact is that the market, what the market is looking for are the condos that Barry Roberts is building. And someone asked if uh, if they were affordable, and Tom Reedy, I think, had a good answer, which was to say that they're affordable to the people who bought them. Um, and lower interest rates helped. The um, the original plan was in three phases. I think Barry was talking about taking two or three years per phase, mm -hmm. and he came back to us and said, "I'm I'm going all in." Because he had them, he had, a, he had everything is virtually sold before he even started building them. Mm. There was a demand for him. He's got more demand. Yeah. Anyway, okay. Uh, which reminded me of something else I wanted to we say. We had a PDPC meeting that uh, Bill and I attended. I don't know if you want to report anything on that or. Uh, it it um, main presentation was uh, the PVPC has been working on model uh, subdivision regulations. I didn't look at them in depth, but uh, Larry Smith was their consultant. Uh, he came out of retirement to consult on that. So I'm suspecting we probably have a lot of the uh, the Hadley 
format in the, mm -hmm. the new model bylaws. Um, and, uh, that was the big, oh, the other thing was uh, everybody's gearing up for the uh, census, which is coming up in April. Okay. Yeah. So. Oh, town meeting special election. Okay. Public yeah. notice to the people listening and watching. There is a special election on Thursday. I think the hours are 12 to 8. Is that right, John? 12 to 8. 12 so. to 8. Yeah. And voting at Hopkins. So they're about the override questions that were um, passed at the fall town meeting. So I encourage everybody to go out and vote. That's this Thursday, the 19th? Yes. Yes. Okay. I've got nothing else. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is history. Thank you, and thank you, John. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah.